So we've got, um, I've just counted to 15. One more time. And they're all here. So we've counted to 15, no less than once an hour for the last uh, 10, 10 days. But really, what a whirlwind this last 12 days has been. Um, it's kind of hard to believe how far we went and how far we came back and all the things that we've done. Um, I'll let them handle all the stories and all the funny stuff and all the, the memories that they want to share. But one thing that I wanted to, to speak to you as the congregation and people who supported us financially with prayers um, and as parents is the difference that a trip like this makes. You know, there's books that have been written on mission trips and international mission trips and whether they're good or not, whether the amount of money that we spend to go so many miles away is really well spent on airline tickets or whether it's well spent on just writing a check and giving the people there a larger check instead of the, the amount that we do spend down there. And since this is my second time, I had a unique experience in that when we got there, um, the people at the hospital were very excited to see me and Sylvia and Woody because it was our second time there. And is there music playing on that? <laughs> um, and turning the corner in the, to the hallway that we painted last time, Donna, the hallway that we painted last time, still blue. It's still as blue as we painted it four years ago. And one thing that they were excited to tell us about was that after we had left, how much they had got pulled together, the people who work at the hospital and also people in the community, and they had painted more of the hospital. They had gone into hallways that need, had needed painting, and because we had been there four years ago, they went and they painted more. Um, same thing with the clinic. When we went to the clinic that a lot of you guys worked at last time, we saw a plaque with our names on it. Donna, Lauren, Stephen, Alex, Carrie, um, everybody, Madison. All of our names are on a, a plaque in the clinic for everybody to see. Um, and that clinic probably would not have been opened, or maybe the work had not wouldn't have necessarily been as uh, completed as well. Mary, he's right there to me. Um, without us going down there and doing that. This time when we, we painted the church, we painted the inside of the church which hasn't been painted since 2004. Um, it's very evident that that church probably wouldn't have gotten painted if, if we hadn't gone down and gotten the job started. We didn't finish the job, but one thing that Ildosio said to me as we were finishing up was how excited he was to be able to go to his congregation on Sunday, today, and show them the work that we had done and challenge them to volunteer their time, to volunteer their money, to finish the inside and the outside of the church, and he was excited for that. So, yeah, we could send a big check, um, but we go and we learn by being there, because we wouldn't believe it if we were just told. And we go to show them our love, to inspire them to complete the jobs that we start. So, thank you for letting us go down there. In years to come, three years, four years from now, if we start, if we start drumming up the support to to go again, remember these words that it makes a difference to them that we come. Um, they were very excited, many different ways to see us. We were celebrities while we were down there. It's unbelievable, um, and I know that they would love to have us back. So, thank you very much for your support. And I'm going to turn it over to these great kids. They were a great group. Got a lot to be proud of. Let you want to go first? <laughs> Please uh, plan on coming back for lunch today. We are going to have lunch this afternoon. We're going to tell you as much as we can this morning, but I know we're going to run out of time. Sure. This, ha this happens a lot. I, I, I have an idea for something and then I say it. And then they say, We don't like your idea. We want to do something different. And so. Without fail, we do what they say. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Bom dia. 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 B
one of you non-Portuguese speakers. <laughs> that means good morning. Um, I will not be able to come to lunch today because I have to head right back to camp to continue my job. So I at least wanted to give you guys some of my experience this morning. Um, like Stephen said, we spent most of our time painting the inside of the church. And we were painting the brick, which I had never done before, but I thought it was a pretty interesting idea. Um, so when we were told that we were going and we were preparing, I didn't really know what we would be doing. So I didn't know if we would be building things, painting, whatever we would be doing. Um, so while we were painting, I was at one point I was like, I feel like I could be doing a whole lot more. I feel like I could be doing more mission work. But then as I went through and I saw some of the church people who came to help us every day and the kids and the connection that we started to have with the people there, I realized that our mission work was more on the people. We had a great connection with everyone there. Everyone we met was super happy to see us. And so it doesn't always have to be about the dirty work that you do. It could just be the people that you connect with. You can meet a friend, Claudio, our bus driver. <laughs> He was one of my favorite people there, and he drove us around every day, and he helped us do everything. He ate with us, he worked with us, he did everything with us, and we all created a great connection with him. Even though we didn't speak his language, he didn't speak ours, we knew what, we knew what he was saying sometimes, but we knew that we had a connection, and that we would never forget him, and he would never forget us. He told us that his heart was heavy, that we were leaving, and ours was just the same. So I think this mission trip, for me at least, was really about the people that we connected with. Because if you don't connect with the people, have you really done much? So um, I had a great time also connecting with my fellow youths and getting to know them a lot better and getting really closer with them and sitting with the same person on the flight for six times. <laughs> that was interesting. We got a little delusional at times and annoyed some people, but <laughs> me and Mary and I had a great time. But I enjoyed it so much with everybody, and I will never forget the people that I went with, the people that I met, and it was just a great experience, and I really want to thank everyone here for supporting us and letting us go, so thank you. Okay, first off, I want to thank everyone here for the support. Um, I think it's safe to say we really couldn't have done it without you. I also want to thank Stephen for, first of all, taking us, and most importantly for putting up with us. I know we're a lot to handle, but we love you more than you know. Um, for the Woodalls, Sylvia and Lindy, thank you so much for just having these relationships with these people in the first place and giving us this opportunity. Um, thank you for translating. I know we wore you out, but I can't, I can't thank you enough for that. And um, for Dr. Bailey, I don't know where you are, but um, there you are. <laughs> thank you so much for all your support and encouragement. We couldn't have made it there without you, and it was just a life-changing opportunity. So when Stephen told us that we didn't have like a specific topic to talk about, just to kind of talk about the experience as a whole, I was like, holy cow, where do I even start? <laughs> because it was, um, it was quite a trip. So I decided to give my top ten most memorable moments. <laughs> um, there's some I didn't put in there, I'll just tell you that. <laughs> um, number ten. Waiting 15 minutes for the airplane bathroom, only to find out that Seal was doing her skin. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, accidentally killing a baby lizard with a Pringles can after <laughs> discovering it under Emma and I's bed at 1 a.m. Accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> Um, number eight, sing a little too much of Ricardo, our painter. <laughs> Let's just say he should have been a plumber, not a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> number seven, Olivia and I attempting to sleep through the terrorizing screams of a very unhappy baby on our overnight flight. Two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> number six, every time I'm hearing Mariana scream after realizing she used sink water to brush her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, watching Steven absolutely devour his body weight in, in steak, only to go on to eat a full cup of ice cream. <laughs> Number four, finally finding something that Steven wouldn't eat after watching him practically gag on this ball of eggs. <laughs> and to be completely honest with you, we're still not kind of, we're still not sure what kind of eggs they were. 
Number three, listening to Seal tell an angry doctor that we literally speak no <laughs> Number two, hearing Stephen comment on the quite intimate couple in front of us at the radio. <laughs> and number one, most certainly, um, last but most certainly not least, number one, watching Emma laugh so hard she actually shot water out of her nose. <laughs> onto her crotch. <laughs> moments before getting on our overnight flight. <laughs> I can't thank y'all enough for the support, and I just I can't even begin to tell you how thankful I am for the relationships we formed with the children. Um, it was eye-opening to see how grateful all these people were and their hospitality, and it was it was beautiful because some people had slim to nothing, and they were so grateful to have us. One lady even invited us in for coffee, and I'm I'm not even sure how she managed to spare that for us, but. Um, and most importantly, bonding with one another in the name of the Lord. It was beautiful. Getting, we were already all so close, but um, it was it was just wonderful. I, I don't even know how to explain it. I can't. It was amazing. But um, they say in life, in your life, there's some things you'll never forget. And I think it's safe to say this is a trip that we will never forget. And I'm exaggerating in no way, shape, or form when I tell you I will never be the same. So thank you. All right, I'm also going to start off with a shout out to everyone that um, without y'all, we would definitely not be able to go on that trip. So we thank you for your prayers, your support um, financially and through um, the words of the Lord. Like We're just so extremely grateful that we got to go on this life changing trip. Also, thank you to Stephen, the Woodalls, Miss Erin and my mother for keeping up with all 10 of us kiddos from getting lost in the airport and uh, just basically surviving South America. So, so thank you all to you. Uh, thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to talk about um, basically one of the most memorable experiences that I had on this trip. So you all know that we painted the majority of the time we were there, the bricks, the columns, the entire inside of the church. But throughout the days that we painted, a uh, selected few of us got to go with an adult and go deliver food to these people that had nothing. Like, this was their food for a month. And it was something that in, like, our American lives, we could probably eat in, like, a week. It was not a lot of food, but it was what they had. And so the first round of food deliveries, um, me, Anderson, Sarah Grace, and my mom, and Aldosio got to go and deliver to three houses. And our first house was this grandmother that had four grandkids. The oldest was my age, and then one that was maybe 10, and then twins that were six. And the stories that they had to tell. Um, the mom of the family had been stabbed the previous year and had died, and the father had died from a stroke. But these kids were as joyful as, like, one of the most joyful groups of people I've ever seen. When we came, they ran up and hugged us. They were just extremely grateful that we were there with the little that we brought. Um, the grandmother was so excited just to have this food and they said this came at the perfect time. They had maybe like a few cups of rice left to feed the five of them for that day. So it was incredible to hear their story about not having parents and as a grandmother raising these four grandkids with little to nothing to live in. And then our second house was um, this set of grandparents as well that had six grandchildren they were all at school that day. But their house was literally maybe a tarp as a roof. They didn't have a flooring, it was dirt. But they offered us coffee, and it was incredible to think that they had so little, but they were so willing to share with us. And that was really like humbling to think that they would do that for us. And our last house was this girl. She was by herself. I'm guessing she was 16 or 17 because she was still in school. But her father had died from cancer, and her mom was working. And they also lived in this little to nothing, which made us really at the end think about how good we have it here and how blessed we are to live in the United States. And all of our problems seem so insignificant compared to theirs. So I know this trip has changed me, and I know that getting to bond with all these um, wonderful people really helped influence me, and I think it'll leave an impact for the rest of my life. So thank you.
Um, I just want to thank all of y'all too for your support um, on this trip because it truly was life changing. And if any of y'all ever get the opportunity to go, I do highly recommend it. And um, I went to the Better Life Church with Olivia, and that's yeah. what I was kind of going to talk about too. But I'll just brush it over it again. Well, when I got it done there, I knew that we were going to be making a difference, but I didn't know exactly how much it was going to make a difference on me too. And the first day, no, Sunday, we went down to the Bread of Life Church, and that's kind of like their mercy center here. So it's in the lower income part of town. And um, it's not like the nicest facility, but like, it's still good enough for them to get along. And we went there, and we got to talk to all the kids, and they were so joyful and grateful that we were there. And even the language barrier didn't matter to them. They were still going to talk to us in Portuguese, because they didn't really understand that we didn't know that. So you just kind of nod and just smile. But they were so, they had so much joy in their hearts, you can visibly see it. And I was kind of like, sometimes I don't have good days, and I'm not the most joyful at all times. But they're in this church that is not as big as this room, probably, and they just have so much joy. And I knew that they weren't in, like, I knew that they weren't in good condition with their, like, money and their families. But I didn't understand it until we went on the runs with, um, with Eudocio. And going into the houses was like, I would have never thought that it would have been that bad. I thought that they were going to have more room, but, like, the first house we went in, we walked through this hallway, I guess you could say. It's just like a little walkway back to their um, kitchen, and it was just a stove and a fridge, and that's all that it was, dirt floors. And um, the grandmother was so thankful. Like I've never received a bigger hug than that, which is, to say the least, it was, um, it was really good. But the kids were still very joyful, and they remembered us from the day before. And I, like, honestly, if I was in that condition, I wouldn't be smiling half as much as they were. But I think it was crazy to just see how God can light up their lives again whenever. From the outside, it looks like it's just dark and lonely. But they just still have the light of God with them, and that's all that mattered. And, like, the second house, the parents of, was it six children? Six children. Um, during the prayer, the, the dad started tearing up because he was so thankful for this food, like Olivia said, that could last us a week. And it had to last them the whole month. And it was... It was eye-opening, to say the least, because I would have been like, good, if that's it, like, that's all you're going to give me. But, like, they were so thankful for it, and that was crazy. And whenever we went down there, I didn't know how much it was going to matter to them. I was like, all right, we're going to go in here, we're going to paint a church. Yeah, I'm going to be thankful for it, but I, I was just like, we're just going to paint a church. Like, it's not that hard. And so, the first day, Sunday, was it Sunday when I got there? The rest of the churches. Yeah. yeah, so we had um, dinner Sunday with the whole entire church and the kids and the parents and everybody there would hug you and you would talk to Google Translate basically. So they, were, they were just thanking you and thank you for being there. And I didn't realize how much of an impact it was until we got there. And whenever we started connecting with these people, like, they, I don't know, it was crazy because I didn't think that I was going to matter that much whenever I went over there. But it really meant a lot to them. And um, whenever Woody gave his speech, there were so many people that came out just to listen to him and um, see the plaque you revealed with everybody's name on it from four years ago. It was crazy. And even the mayor of Hio Verge was happy to see us welcome us into his house. And it was, it was crazy to think that I would just thought that we were going down to the paint, but it was so much more to not just the church, but the whole town too. Mm -hmm. Hi. Okay. <laughs> I would also like to thank everybody that got us there, as all of them said. It was an amazing trip, and we couldn't have done it without all of you. And when we were first talking about going to a foreign country, I was worried about the language barrier because how are we supposed to talk and help these people if we couldn't talk to speak their language. And even when we first landed in Sao Paulo, I poured salt in my coffee thinking it was sugar. <laughs> so that's not helpful. <laughs> um, but thanks to Sylvia and lots of hand gestures and a lot of Google Translate, we made some of the, like, some crazy like 
relationships while we were down there. We just got so close to these kids that came and helped us every day. And it was really beautiful to see how much they loved us and how much they welcomed us into their church and their um, homes and their hearts. And they didn't even know us at all. And we didn't, they didn't know what we were saying and we didn't know what they were saying. But they, you could really see God's light and love through them. And so passing out food for me was also one of the most eye-opening experiences of the trip. Um, we went into this, our first house was like the size of a closet maybe, and they had bunk beds and a bed and a stove and a fridge, and it was dirt floors, and I've never really quite seen anything like it. Like, I knew it was going to be bad, but it was way worse than I expected, but they were so happy to see us and so thankful that we had brought this food that who knows how long it would have lasted us, but it was lasting them for a long time. And that was, it was definitely very eye-opening. It really put things in perspective about how lucky we are in the United States. And so, um, <laughs> another cool thing I thought was during the church service on Sunday, I, we walk into church and they're all speak like the sermon's in Portuguese, and I didn't know how much we were actually going to, but it the sermon being in Portuguese was also kind of cool because we all listened for words we needed to try to figure out what they were talking about. But one of the coolest things we did was we sang How Great Thou Art in Portuguese. And we knew the words in English, but be being able to sing it with them in Portuguese, I just thought was really cool. And so, um, we also sang, that wasn't, we didn't just sing in church, we sang everywhere. <laughs> everybody wanted to hear us sing, and it was funny because everybody would video us while we sang. <laughs> and we really, we really felt like celebrities while we were there, so that was, that was really fun. And at the mayor's house, we sang, and we, we danced with all the, with the mayor's kids and the health department, the health department's heads kids, and we had a really good time at the mayor's house eating dinner with them. And, um, we really, the people that we got to know most though were the ones that worked alongside us while we were painting. And there was um, three little kids that we really had such a close bond with by the end of the week. They loved coming and seeing us and they would give us big hugs and we'd play soccer with them with an empty two liter can. And Steven um, hit the ball, in the, or the tennis ball into somebody else's garage and they were upset about that. But. <laughs> And, but no, we had a great time bonding with them, and even though, like I said, we couldn't speak their language, we had Google Translate, and we really were able to grow close to them. And we worked a lot, but we also had a lot of fun, and so yes, thank you all for letting us go. Okay, so um, before I start, I just want to thank Stephen for being the best youth leader ever, and all of you for um, doing your devotions while we were gone. Um, <laughs> um, so, before I went, I had no idea what to expect because, um, as some of you know, I've never been on an airplane and I've never been to a foreign country, so um, <laughs> getting there, it was kind of surprising to see how similar it was to America and also how different it was. Um, one difference was that the people were a lot different from how they are here. They're very, even if they don't understand you, they immediately love you. Like, they'll hug you and they'll try their best to communicate with you. And at first, I was really frustrated because I couldn't tell what the kids were saying and I really wanted to. And um, <clears throat> after, as the week kind of went by, I realized that you didn't have to have words to communicate with them. We would dance and sing with them and they taught us some of their songs. And um, we drew, and yeah, we just did a lot of stuff for the kids to really connect with them. And seeing how sad they were when we left was so heartbreaking. Um, and as everybody else has said, the time was I have been experienced was going and delivering the food, uh, just because it was the worst conditions we saw when we were there. Um, as Emma said, I was with Emma and Mariana in my group, and the first. And Freddie, yeah. Uh, the first. <laughs> oh, in here. Um, and the first house we went to was absolutely heartbreaking. There were four, three or four little kids running around with torn clothes, and there was um, animals like dogs and birds in cages. And the dogs just had bones like coming out of their skin. 
And um, when we went to the house, there was no lights, and it was dark, and there was just beds and a dirt floor and a metal roof, and we couldn't understand what the lady was saying. We could tell how appreciative she was, and we could tell that she really needed our help, and we were happy to give it to her. And then the next house we went to, I believe it was two women and their sister and their children. Um, they were also really grateful for what we gave them. We could see how joyful they were, and they even made us presents that, that they gave us on the last day. So that was really kind of them, and we weren't even expecting it. And then the last house we went to was a woman who lived all by herself, and she said she had diabetes, and she had to take 20 pills a day, and her children wouldn't visit her, and her grandchildren wouldn't visit her either. So. It was just so hard seeing all those people suffering like that. Um, like, and it made us realize that there's people like that everywhere, not just in South America, like in Anderson, anywhere you go, there's people like that, and we really need to start realizing that and start helping them. And we, we just thought of it as the most eye-opening experience. And now when I'm starting to complain, I kind of think about those people and stop myself and just think about what they went through and comparing it to what I went through, which is not nearly as bad. And um, it's safe to say this is probably the best experience of my life. I um, enjoyed all the time with these people. We've grown, grown so much closer. We have so many crazy stories to tell. <laughs> um, and we ate a lot of great food, too. <laughs> Drink a lot of tea and guarana. <laughs> Y'all will be able to try today. Um, and yeah. Hello. Um, so the stuff I'm going to talk about all has the common thing of what I didn't realize. And there was a lot more that I didn't know going into the trip than I thought. Um, so the first thing I didn't realize was that the second we stepped off the plane, we were the minority. I did not see any other Americans the whole time we were there. And at first that was really scary because we could not talk to these people. And especially at first, we tried to order coffee in the airport and that went very badly. Um, we got a lot of strange looks and it just, it really made me think about the way we look at people that are different than us. and. Lots of stares doesn't always feel good, but by the end of the week, we just tried to pretend we were celebrities, but it was definitely <laughs> different. Um, the next thing I didn't realize was just how much the hospital meant to everyone there. I, it was evident that that hospital is the livelihood of the whole community. And Sylvia and Woody might not admit it, but they are celebrities. <laughs> Everywhere we went, people, as soon as they heard the Gordon name or anything, were just, oh, and <laughs> take pictures. And, so, and Woody's picture was up throughout the hospital, and, and that was really neat that we were following them around, you know, so we got some of the spotlight too, but no, that was really awesome. And they even compared Woody's mom, June, um, to Dorcas from Axe, which I thought was a big compliment because she served everyone she came to encounter with, so that was cool to see how much these people meant to them. Um, I also didn't realize how much I'd get out of just spending time with the kids, because Yes, we were supposed to be painting, but the kids from the church would come and help us the whole time, and they just wanted to be around us, and so that was really neat, because during little breaks, we would play with them, and we got really close with all of them, so just seeing how much they wanted to be with us and wanted to help us and just be with the Americans, that was really neat. Um, I didn't realize how good the food would be and how much we would be eating. We had about five meals a day, but no one really complained. It was all good. Um, I didn't realize how much we'd be able to learn, even with the language barrier. Um, the first day was rough, but I think we're all pretty fluent now. <laughs> singing and just smiling and laughing when there was awkward silence and just <laughs> hugging and playing games and Google Translate for sure. We really did get to communicate and learn more about them than I thought we were going to be able to. Um, this is kind of bad to say, but I didn't realize how positive everyone would stay for the whole trip. You know, 
big group, being around each other a lot. You get tired by the end of the week. But we seriously had a great time the whole time. We were just singing and even the work we did, nobody really complained about everything we were doing. So that was really awesome. Um, the last thing is I really did not realize how bad the houses that we went to were going to be. And I know everyone here has said that, but the packages of food that we were taking were equivalent to $10 worth of food, and that's what they had for the whole month. And the first house that our group went to, they had been out of food for three days. And that's a scary thought, um, having to rely on someone else for everything you eat. And stepping in that house and seeing how small it was, there was no door. I didn't see a toilet or a bathtub, so I don't know what they did about any kind of sanitation. Um, the dirt floor and just the kids wouldn't even come inside. I don't know if they were scared of us, but it was really shocking to see the conditions that those people were living in. And it made me stop and think, they had $10 to spread over the course of a month. And there's been a lot of frivolous things that I've spent $10 on easily. So it really put things into perspective. And I'm really glad we got to go because I don't know if I'll ever experience anything like that again. It was really powerful. So thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I would also like to say thank you to all of you for giving your time and donations to help us be able to go and do this because this is such an amazing experience for all of us. And one thing I liked about this trip the most was that we all had the same experience, but it was kind of different for each of us because we broke up into different groups to deliver food to houses. And then we also went on hospital rounds with a chaplain one afternoon. <laughs> so that was very different for all of us. My group was me, Freddie, Amy, and Steven. And we had a chaplain that spoke only Portuguese, and just like everyone else, except after a while we had translators that showed up. So we were doing okay. Everybody else was not doing okay. <laughs> That's when Seal was yelling at the doctor <laughs> about... Yeah, he was yelling at them, and then she was like, we just don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> we were still on our rounds in the hospital, because we had translators, so. Uh, but that was a very eye-opening experience, because we went and took some of the things that all of you had made, like the crosses with Bible verses on them, or the prayer shawls, and we also handed out Portuguese Bibles, and we were giving them to the patients and their families in the rooms, and then we would pray with them, and you know, we had Amy with us, she was a doctor, so she was also like a celebrity around there, because they were like, oh, American doctor, let's have her pray with us. So, <coughs> so everybody else's hospital extravaganza lasted, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, ours lasted about an hour. We just kept going from room to room, and even if another group had already been in there, they still wanted to pray with us, and it was really cool to see how much they cared and wanted us to be there. We even got to go into ICU and pray over that entire area. And we also went to go see the premature babies and we got to pray in there as well and hand out crosses in there. So I really appreciated that experience because it's not something that you necessarily see. Um, I also really liked taking food to the houses I think my group covered that one pretty good. And we got to also go to three different church services on Sunday. And I never realized how much that would impact me because it was all in Portuguese, so you know, we didn't really know what was happening. But we got to experience a new way of worship. And they just like put us right on in the service and made us feel at home there too. And that would, this would be nothing that I would ever forget. So thank you all. Okay, so um, I didn't realize when we got there, I guess I thought that more people would speak English than they did. And so we got on the, uh, off the airplane and we got our bags. And then we met Claudia, our driver. And he already knew Stephen, Sylvia, and Woody. And so I thought, that he spoke English. <laughs> and so I was on the front row of the bus as we were driving to Hia Verji, and I probably asked him like 
five or six questions, like serious questions in English, and I really want them to answer me. And so I, eventually I was like, Stephen, he's not answering me. Like, he's so rude, he won't answer. He speaks Portuguese. <laughs> I felt so bad. I didn't know what to do, so I just kind of like sat quiet for the rest of the ride. <laughs> so that was my very first experience there. So then I was kind of, actually, that's body right there. That's yeah. we had a flat tire. We had two flat tires. Two flat tires. And I don't think we ever pumped up the second one. <laughs> and we drove all the way like four hours to the airport after that. And so, um, one of my like best experiences was we went was we went to Sunday school um, at their church. And so we gave them like this. And we taught the kids how to make bracelets because Emma and Marianna brought like string. So we taught them all how to make bracelets, and they caught on really easily. They were able to tie all the knots just by showing them. And so there was this little girl that someone had given her a box of crayons, like we had given them to her, and she was sitting on like the front stage after um, Sunday school. Oh, that's her right there, the little girl. Her name's Nicola. And so I saw her sitting on the stairs, and she was like taking the crayons out one by one out of the box. And so I walked up to her and I sat down, and um, I started like saying the colors in English, and she, she caught on so easily. She said pink and green, and purple was kind of hard for her to say, but. She did say it, and then she took a green one, and she held it up to my face, like to my eyes, and she was like, and then Anderson and Freddie walked up, and she held it up to their face, because she had never seen a different color like I before, and they thought that our blonde hair and like blue eyes was crazy. They stared us down in every way. And so we decided we were Beyonce for the week. <laughs> I don't know if you knew what Beyonce felt like every day. And then um, also the drink that we were all in love with was Guarana, and we figured out we were drinking it at every meal. We would down like four, like two liter bottles at dinner, and they came up to us. We thought it was like a good drink, like no caffeine, and they said it's their Red Bull. And we were drinking it so much, and wondering why we had so much energy every meal. And so also I don't know. So was it me who was living the day? Yeah. And Stephen went with us to deliver food. And so um, when we got, like, our second house, I think, was a grandma who had nine grandchildren. Most of them, but three, were at school. And um, she was, like, this tall. She was so precious. And she didn't have, like, mostly anything. But the first thing she did is she hugged, she hugged all of us so many times. And she was so happy. We did not know what she was saying. But she was so excited to have us there. And she sat us down, and she gave us all coffee. And then there was a little boy that was in the bathroom who was so scared of us, he wouldn't come out. And so I went and I like shoved my head in the bathroom door and he just like stared at me and like ran in the corner. And then Stephen went in there and we finally got him out. And he came and prayed with us. And, oh, Stephen's taste testing. This is one of my favorite parts. I was sitting with Stephen when he tasted the egg cheese ball. I'm sure what it was. And he would eat like four plates at dinner. And he was like, I'm so full. I need more. I need more. And so he would just keep eating. And he said, he said, I feel so good. I've never felt worse in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun the whole week. So he said, feel better. You have to keep eating. So we had a lot of fun. Thank you, Sylvia, for translating everything. I know we asked you like every three minutes that we needed you. But we had a blast. Thank you for everyone who let us go. So. So I know that all of you have already heard so many thank yous, and I'm just going to add one more. Um, but thank you to everybody who supported us either with prayers from home while we were gone, or made prayer shawls to take with us, or made signs for us when we got home and showed up to greet us in the parking lot. Um, and a special thanks to Stephen for putting up with all of us and trying to hurt us like cattle all week. Um, and to Sylvia for basically wearing herself out every day, trying to translate nine things at a time, and everybody shouting, Sylvia, Sylvia. <laughs> you know, we're all having nine different conversations, and she's just running back and forth, trying to translate a sentence at a time of each. And, and to Woody, I mean, Woody really, he did a lot of the work, you know, a lot of the, the tough work at the, at the church, sanding and painting, and, you know, he was doing all kinds of stuff, and. You know, he really, you know, kept a lot of us motivated to keep working, and 
Thank you to Amy for keeping us all medicated. <laughs> by, by about Tuesday or Wednesday, we were all so sick. We were congested, and we just we were all like really sick. And then Amy just you know kept us all going. She really did. I mean, she was she was our our drug dealer. <laughs> Not that kind of drug, okay. She really, she did a great job with the girls and being kind of like a mom to them. And I wasn't in the house with all of them, but I know that she did a great job. And thanks to mom too for coming with us. And she didn't stop working the entire time we were there. But um, I know that everybody's talked about the delivering the food trips, but I'm going to do it again. Um, and like we said, it was me and Seal and both of the Johnson sisters and my mom. And it goes to So there were six of us in a car that seats five. See why I sit on Emma's lap. Um, but when we pulled up to our first house, I'm not even kidding, I thought we were at the wrong house. I, I really did. I thought we were stopping to ask for directions or something. And I got there and you know, we the mom seemed almost embarrassed to invite us into her house at first because they had nothing. I and mean, they really didn't. And I don't I couldn't bring myself to take a picture of it, of the inside of the house. I only got one picture on the outside, right as we were walking out the front gate, because I, I just, I felt like I had to have something, because I didn't want to lose the memory of how I felt when I first got there. Um, but I mean, they had, I mean, there was no door on the house. I doubt, I don't know if there were any lights. You know, there, they didn't have, all their clothes were in a pile in a dresser that had no doors. You know, they really didn't have much of anything. And they had, you know, there were four kids, a single mom, and three dogs. And they had, like they said, they were no, they had no food for three days before we got there. And, you know, we prayed with them and we gave them all kinds of prayer shawls and prayer crosses and stuff. And they were just so grateful. But, and the, the second house we went to, was Joanna and her family. And Joanna, Eldosia was telling us that she she does so much for the church. She steps in and you know gives sermons when he can't be there. She helps out with the kids and opening up the church and you know teaching them on Sundays and she really does she she lives for that church the Pada Vida. And um, you know, I mean she was a little better off than the people that we visited first, but I mean, they still needed that food badly. And I mean, Seal said it perfectly, the last lady, I mean, diabetes, she had to take 20 pills a day. Her, her daughters did not want to come visit her or to bring her children, their children to come visit her. And she, the person who owned her house was selling it and she, had, she, had, she didn't have another place to stay yet. I don't know if she even did find a place to stay. But um, when we got in the car on the way home, you know, back from delivering food, you know, Ocio, he was asking us where our thoughts were, and we didn't speak. We were, we were absolutely floored. We, we didn't have words to say, you know, what we were thinking, because it was extremely, you know, gut-wrenching to see the things that these people didn't have, or the few things that they did have. And, you know, talking with, Mariana and Emma and Seal and Mom and even Sarah Grace later after another day, you know, our you know our problems, you know, we think that they're huge problems, but they're nothing compared to what those people have. And those people are still so much happier through those problems than you know they can show so much joy, so much more joy in the face of their troubles than we can, and you know. Going there and doing that, you know, I was talking to Sarah Grace one afternoon, and, you know, we were talking about the Mercy Center downtown, and doing the things that we did in Hugh Vergy, you know, we, we don't do that kind of stuff here, you know, we, we could be doing so much more, and we realized that, you know, we do, we do a lot, our church does a lot to help the people in Anderson, but there's something to be said for actually going to those people and spending time with them, or 
inviting you know people from a poorer church to come worship with us one Sunday, or you know, because they were so inviting when we got to church, they made us feel like family, and that's an experience that, to use a phrase that everybody else has said, we won't ever forget that. You know, we don't even need pictures to do that. But thank you again. It's been really special. Really quick, if you'll give me a minute to talk about two people that meant so much to me while we were there, and that were Eudocio and Lucia Santos, who are our main hosts, and they are just, they are angels, and they took us around, and they showed us around, and they, they, they just, I mean, they are, I told Lucia, I said, you're my second mother, I'm adopting you as my mother, because you are the most wonderful woman I've ever met in my life, and they do I mean we give our church gives to support them and their mission and these I mean they work from sunrise to sunset every day helping people Lucia has two jobs two full-time jobs she's a pharmacist and they still you know pastor three churches and they do the the food deliveries for the bread of life mission and I mean they are the hardest working people I've ever met and they're um, their work is always giving. They don't get back, they give constantly. And they were so inspiring to me. I don't, I don't, I told them I will carry them in my heart every day because I want to be like them. And I also want to say how much I really enjoy getting to know Woody and Sylvia because they are, they are angels also. And I did not know how much, how wonderful they were. And if you ever, get a chance, if you don't know them well, to just spend some time with Sylvia and Woody, you should do it, because it will inspire you. Morning at the, and he may tell you, at, at, uh, more based on hope. What's the different kind of hope that you can bring to people, and patients and families at the end of life? And the second talk in the afternoon, which they stood up for an hour while I translated how a doctor may approach a patient and family if they have bad news. So um, having said that, the other thing I wanted to touch on this morning was um, the ministry of the women. It's very true in Brazil, as it's probably true here in the U.S., that the church runs on the work and the leadership of women. Um, they are the workers, the evangelists, the nurturers, the people who keep the church doors open. However, in Brazil, they are not, uh, in the Presbyterian Church of Brazil, they are not formally ordained to leadership or on the uh, ruling councils and so forth of the Presbyterian Church. And we had the opportunity to offer some non-traditional church role modeling this week. Um, I'm not... Uh, I was I was approached and and uh, engaged in conversation from both men and women that we met during the week, and uh, they noted some non-traditional stuff for them. For one thing, the the your young women working hard for long periods of time in dirty work with breaks for singing. Uh, was was definitely noticed, and they were like, "No, I don't think I don't I don't think um, that's very usual." That I'm, we're really amazed at how hard they work, and the fact they'll climb up on the scaffolds and get paint splattered on them and clean up stuff off the floor and all that stuff. And they, that was that they were noticed by both church members and by uh, the people helping. Uh, the workers helping and so forth. Uh, the second thing was that they they engaged us to talk about uh, in Sunday school, in the adult Sunday school, about Dorcas and some of the other women Paul mentions who carried letters for him, risked their lives uh, leading home churches, were called deacons and apostles in, in his letters. And um, that, that was interesting to have highlighted something that they treasure very much, which is the letters of Paul in the New Testament, and to bring out 
the role of, of women in um, in those uh, in those early days. And then they got a chance to see Dr. Amy Sanciolo be invited up to uh, to help serve communion and to lay on hands blessing in the ordination of new elders. And there was more than one person after that who came up and said, wow, including a young woman, I've never seen that happen. That was, that was really cool. So um, of all the things we learned, we got to exchange and model things that just you know, don't even have to be belabored or talked about. But that, that was a very touching time for me. Uh, one of the things I promised all the parents before we went was that I would uh, be protective of uh, all these young ladies and this young man. And the way I did that, actually, we had a band that has an opening, a big opening for getting in and out on the right side of it. There's not an opening on the left except the drivers. So, and like the bands we had here for for a long time, they been open on both sides, just opens on the right. Well, that's fine if you park at a curb on the right side of the road. Get out on the sidewalk. Everybody's cool. Uh, okay, that better. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, we had this we had this band, 15 person band, that would fit six or seven normally sized Americans. <laughs> and so we had to be very friendly. But anyway, the band opened just on the right side for the main for the main pass department. So if you're up against the curb, it's fine. Everything's safe. They weren't really driving motorcycles on the sidewalk much. <laughs> and so you know, but when we had to stop at a left curve, which we would do at fairly exciting places like the ice cream place, and okay. things like that, uh, we had to let we had to let people get out in the street. So what I would do is, if this is the back back right corner of the van here, so the streets here, doors over here, I got out because I'm the biggest thing in the van, and I stand here looking at traffic. <laughs> So come by me. And so I had a couple of tried to side swipe me, but other than that, um, that's one of the things, one of my primary tasks was to be a roadblock uh, in Brazil. The other thing I got to do was to talk a little bit about um, some subjects near uh, that they don't really get to talk about much, which is delivering bad news or palliative medicine. So I got to talk some about that. And, uh, um, Proud of these, these kids for bearing with me with all that because it, the talks weren't aimed at them. Uh, maybe in a few years, one or two of them be in medical school, then you can remember. Um, they, uh, so they did, did very well. But um, one of the things that made it pretty easy, and then I realize now, is I uh, want all the, all, the, all the kids to stand up for me. All right, look at the peoples. <laughs> they took direction actually very well for me, which surprised me a little bit. Um, the last group didn't take direction all that well. <laughs> but these, these folks really did. Um, and maybe my directions were better. You know? could, could, could have been. So anyway, but I want you to look at them because they are the embodiment of our hope. I did get to talk a little bit about my mother, which was a lot of fun, and get in touch with some of the things she had done for so many years, um, and so that was a lot of fun as well. A couple of things that uh, were mentioned this morning, which I think deserve to be re-emphasized. One is that the Pau de Vida mission uh, that the kids got to see um, is got started with two cents a meal money, and two cents a meal is not something that we emphasize here on a daily basis, although if some of you are inspired, we could. Uh, it is uh, a Presbyterian church-wide and actually other Protestant church-wide thing where people just have a piggy bank at home and they remind themselves every day uh, that about 800 million people in the world don't have enough to eat that particular day. And so they put in two cents for each person for each meal. And that gets collected and it goes to places like Kibberi to Brazil, uh, Africa, Asia, you name it, it's, it's gone around. And plenty in here in the Americas as well. And some right here in the United States. Uh, Brazil is still much like the United States, I think was. I often think of it as the United States 
several years ago um, in terms of its uh, poverty. There's uh, all range of stuff there from the poverty that these folks saw and worse uh, in some of the big cities and the favelas of Rio de Janeiro, places like that, uh, to uh, just palatial houses uh, and uh, people that have, have all sorts of wealth. So it's a, it's a wide, wide range and they got to see some of that. Uh, that range. The other thing that, uh, that, that uh, just for future use here, I would like to point out. Um, oh, it, it, well, I'll just stop. I'll, I'll give you one other story because uh, I got to do what I really like to do, and that's uh, what I really, really like to do is take uh, because I do this every day. I, I work with, I teach doctors for crying out loud, and as you might. Have noticed doctors don't really learn. It's kind of tough to tell doctors much <laughs> to really get doctors to pay attention. So I have to be on my A game. And well, one of the places I was on my A game this week was uh, last Monday. Marianne. Marianne. <laughs> uh, had to get up on a ladder. She wasn't liking this too much. You want to talk about your 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 heights? Um, yes, it's, it's not good when you're afraid of heights to be standing on a ladder that's constantly wobbling. <laughs> but she, she, again, she took direction. There were some parts of the part of the painting job that had to be done on a ladder. There wasn't any other way to do it. You couldn't get a scaffold to it, this, that, and the other. So she allowed me to coach her up the ladder and up and up and up and up until she got near the top. And I was, I was steadying the thing the whole time. I basically just did my thing as the anchor man and, <laughs> and uh, steadied it. By the end of the week, there's a picture in there of her smiling up on the top of the ladder. I was in her hand. But that, that let me do what it is I do. Uh, Aaron. The other thing I'd like to say about Aaron's coming up is they, they talk about me being hard work, but every time I got ready to quit, Aaron was still up in the back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I hadn't really prepared what to say because I didn't know what was going to be said already. Um, but I do want to say that I feel very blessed to have been able to go on this trip. I didn't know that I would be selected um, being somewhat of a fairly new member to the church only in the last several years. Um, but it was really God, I mean, God's, God, it, I don't know, God's hand had to have been on that to choose me to go because this has blessed me so much um, in so many different ways. And in way, one way I want to share with you is that I was able to get to know some of these girls in our church that, I mean, I do help with PYC, but I'm often with the middle school group because... I have children in the um, high school group, so I try to give them some space. Um, but it was really nice to just watch them and, and learn about them. And I, you know, I'm not a kind of a person that really goes into a group and, and does well um, in large groups. But I had the opportunity um, with some of our. Um, we had like little buddy groups where we, Stephen would pick two people to go aside. <laughs> Um, and, and talk about our journal entries for the day. Um, and so I got to spend a little time with Mariana and with Olivia, and it was really nice to just kind of one-on-one -on -one spend some time with a couple of the girls to really get to know them better and to be more comfortable with them. But I just want to say that this is a wonderful group of young people, and I'm so proud that I got to know them and that um, we have these type of people coming out of our church at this age. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, for me, I was naturally um, drawn to the children when we go to different places. And uh, <laughs> the girl said at one point, they said, we looked around and if we couldn't find you, we were like, where's the kids? Because they were like, that's where Aaron is, you know? Um, but uh, they had, I mean, I, yes, I was in the little playhouse with the kids. <laughs> But um, they just really, and that, they are just, my heart just felt like it was about to explode at certain times. Um, I had one little girl at the evening service at the, the, the no, Vila Rosalina, I'm sorry, um, that 
she just took to me and she dragged me around to everyone in her family and she had uncles and aunts and cousins and mom. And she drove to every person. <laughs> like I was even carrying around her little baby cousin that was six months old. They were just like, here, you know, and they just, the parents trusted me. They just let me carry around this little baby. Oh my and, um, but I had so many wonderful experiences. Um, there were times where in my head I felt a little bit guilty. I was thinking, we're, we're going on a mission trip and we are, I mean, we're not building a church, we're just painting a church. I'm like, why well, I should be working harder than this. But as I was there painting the bricks, I was thinking with each brick I was painting that I was putting love in that church. And part of my heart was going into that church. Every brick I was painting, I could just... I mean, I, my heart was growing, and I could feel the love in the church grow. Um, another, you know, we, we also got to do some things that made us like celebrities. We got to go eat dinner at the mayor's house, okay, which was phenomenal. And I'm thinking, we are on a mission trip. We're not supposed to be going to eat at the mayor's house. But the more I thought about that and prayed about that, I realized that was showing us how important the mission and the money that we collect as a church to send to that mission is. How important what our church gives is to this community that it means so much to them that we have the attention of the mayor. And we, it was just to, to see what Sylvia and what Alma's family started and Sylvia and Woody's families and, and just to see how much what we give, which is not even that much, what we give, how much that means to these people. Um, <laughs> I do want to say that, you know, I think when we first got there, everybody was a little bit nervous. And when we first started trying to interact with the people, you know, I could see some of the girls were a little bit hesitant because they're like, I'm not going to say something right. They're not going to understand me. And so the first few places we would go, I kind of noticed that they would kind of be over by themselves at one end. And, and the, the Brazilian people would be kind of over in their own area but as the week went on they figured out it didn't matter if they could speak the language they could hug they could smile they could dance i mean these girls were teaching dance moves to to like the mayor's daughter <laughs> to the kids at the church i mean um so it was just amazing to see the change through the week to to us to let down our guard and to to really feel like we were family with these other people. Um, I guess that's all I really have to say. She would like to see a picture of the mayor, Amy. Of the mayor. Of the mayor. Of the mayor. And he told us before we left that, well, he said a couple funny things. He said, you know, hey, when you first came, you brought the old people. And now you've brought us the young, pretty people. <laughs> this is the mayor. And what's his name? Uh, I don't remember. Paolo. Paolo. De Valle. Paolo De Valle, I believe. But, um, and then he told us before he left, he said, I want all of you to promise me that you will come back. He said, you are always welcome here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to let Amy come up and talk a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I really don't have much else to add other than to echo what everybody says. The um, It was such an honor to be able to be called, to be asked to serve communion. It means so much to me to share. <laughs> well, that's one of the funniest pictures. That's on the trip after we get out of the airplane. And there's not enough seats for sweet Addie. <laughs> so she's on top of suitcases. <laughs> But anyway, uh, but yeah, there's all kinds of, but just to, to be, I didn't really realize, Sylvia, the way you said it, that, that I didn't even realize that how much that was motivating to those young women to be able to, it was amazing to lay hands on 
you know, these deacons and elders. And the one, the one that I got to know was the one who gave his testimony. We didn't talk about it, but both Anderson and Marianne, I don't think there was enough time for all the, um, that's Claudio, serving ice cream, which we ate a lot of. Um, but Anderson and Marianne both gave a brief five-minute testimony. You've heard them spoke at their senior. But the other one, and they did a fabulous job. They really did. Um, but the other one that gave his testimony was a gentleman that um, is wants to go to seminary. And um, there's a picture. I don't know. There's a picture of it. But I got to know him and his family through Google Translate um, during that dinner on Sunday. But I mean, he, just him telling his story of being a young man who, you know, was stealing at a young age and found Christ. And um, I don't know where the picture is. It would be on the top of Sunday because I talked to him on Sunday. And his little girl was Campbell. There it is. There she is. So see that shirt that says. Believe the hype. Believe the hype. That child was all over that church. <laughs> but um, but praise the Yeah, there she is. That is a you know Brazilian Campbell um, if I've ever seen. So scooch down and um, his name was Alfie, if I'm saying that. Alife. See, I say it wrong. Um, and that's his wife and their other sweet little baby. And we got to know each other. Um, and just just a sweet, sweet, just. We touched so many lives, and they touched us in so many ways. And these children, and oftentimes my daughter doesn't hear me tell her how proud I am of her, but I'm extremely proud of you, Olivia. And all of you. These, I had nine feelings. I had nine daughters. <laughs> and Freshie is what we call it. Um, but it was wonderful. And they can sing and spread God's love. And the other thing they loved us to do when I was in... I feel comfortable praying in front of patients, in front of people, reading the Bible. So it wasn't hard for me to pray with these sick patients. But some of these folks stepped up and prayed with these people. And they loved hearing us pray in English. And they're trying to learn English. And many people wanted to practice their English with us, which was really fun. There's a, this is like a covered dish dinner. So we had, we had three church services on Sunday. So we did the morning where we interacted with the children. It was a fellowship time, Sunday school time. And then we went to um, Palma Vida, which means bread of life. Um, and we worshiped there. We had to worship there at 430 because it's in a really rough area of town. So the big church is in the evening, usually at 7 o'clock. So we went back to the big church here. This is after big church. But if you can imagine, those people walk to the church. So the way Edocio talked about, and Edocio and Lucia, just like Aaron said, just their lives and Woody and Sylvia's lives, just oh, they're such an example. But Edocio explained that the, the bread of life, they would do those food deliveries. And sometimes they're on the list to get those food deliveries for like, at first it was three years, now it's a year. But they would meet that need and show Christ's love. And then they will walk to the church and hear the word of God. And then some of the people, and I don't have great pictures, but, but some of those women in particularly then serve in the church and help with the Pau Vida um, services. But that was at 4.30, and then that day we went back. This is Rio Hirovergi. I don't speak very good Portuguese, but show those pictures, Stephen. We, um, Claudio kind of took us on a extra tour. Say what? A detour on a dirt road that we were a little scared that we didn't know well enough, we thought he might chop us up and do something. <laughs> Sorry, but, but I mean, we were on this dirt road, and, but we were there for decades, you know, but, but we went up to this chapel. I think if you go, um, you got it, okay. So there's this, so most of Brazil, if I'm right, that is Christian is Catholic. Is that fair to say? Okay. So this is a, this was a Catholic chapel at the top of a hill overlooking Zero, 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 zero. Oh, <laughs> I will change it tonight. But, uh, I will change it later. For this trip, I needed an easy one. But so the van comes up, and we're walking up. This was, I don't know, that was a good cardiac workout. Um, but go this way. So we're walking up to that chapel, and there's a legend that somebody else can say the legend because I don't know it, but I think it's. Suicide pack, one of them backed out. Romeo and Juliet, Portuguese style. No, one of them backed out. And then. Kind of like a Romeo and Juliet story that these couple that couldn't get married, but apparently the guy backed out and the girl killed herself. They were both going to kill themselves. They both were going to kill themselves. Let's do it. So these are some of the side stories. But anyways, keep going, Stephen. 
But the view from up there, as you can see, was breathtaking. They're scared. So, and it was windy, and it was... The other thing is, they were talking about needing my medical care, but really what they needed was saline, because it's the dry season. And it was so dry there, I just went and... Anderson really enjoyed going to the pharmacy with me, in the um, trying to get nasal saline. And, and the bus, as you saw, we were, spent a lot of time, and we used a lot of meclizine, bonding, or motion sickness medicine. But, um, but they didn't really. They, they did great. But you can see, the, and there's Claudio in the middle. He became BFF. He's awesome, yeah. He was he was wonderful. He kept us safe, but he didn't speak any English. He's also somewhat of a bodyguard for these guys. He too. was a bodyguard. He was. <laughs> at the rodeo, yeah. and at the rodeo, you need to show some of the rodeo pictures, and then I want to do some videos because you don't need to hear me. Yeah, they were doing lots of. They had an internet, as you can tell by their posting. I do want to give props to. Is where is Catherine? She got she she I'm sorry, Catherine did a great job. She's the one who manned CPC underscore PYC. Um, oh, and that's also, we call, they call him, this is Christ the Redeemer, which is in um, Rio de Janeiro, the big one, but this is the little one, so we call it Little Big Jesus. <laughs> but we, okay, so what's really cool, too, there's a video of this, is some of us went over to, um, it's not very little, some of us went up to, there's me, I must probably show all those. <laughs> um, some of us went to that, that, um, chapel on the hill and the other ones were doing their bread of life deliveries and we didn't know it but we all met at little big jesus and it was really cool it was like a little reunion <laughs> so um but but christ the redeemer and love 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 what else do i need to talk about um the rodeo well the rodeo is like i have never been to a nascar race but steven said it was much like a nascar race and there was a lot of we did wait two hours for it to begin and it was a lot of people watching. So we were immersed in all these wonderful, godly people for the whole week. And then we go into the world. And they were drinking and they were Seven years enjoying their themselves. And um, Stephen always makes things quite humorous. Now, you don't need to go in all photos. Go into favorites. Oh, uh, and there's me. Go into favorites. Now, that, that, that's us going through. We had VIP tickets. Which was awesome. Um, there's us going into the rodeo. You're seeing all of my pictures. Sorry, even the blurry ones. Stephen wanted a pair of cowboy boots. He probably had plenty of time before the rodeo started. But we got in to watch the... Um, there were no seats, so we stood for two hours. Um, we did see the fireworks, although we were in a covered area where we couldn't see the big ones explode. Stephen, those are all kind of my favorites, baby. <laughs> Well, here you tell them. Yeah, they were looking. Well, there were boys that look at our beautiful girls, and Claudio was, I don't know what all Claudio did to protect us. There was a line in the back, and Claudio and Steven were both like, go. Claudio and Steven were like, <laughs> Because, you know, they're beautiful anyways, but they're also white. I mean, white girls with beautiful blonde hair, some of them blonde with these blue eyes, and boys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>
Who wants to have to get back in like three of them? Four of them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sit, this song, you'll sing. Oh, nobody got hurt over here. Anyway, back there. Okay. So, anyways, they got to be, they got to see um, just immersed in culture. If you'll go to videos from Brazil, we'll show some of those. You can turn them. Oh, you've got them all. Never mind. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Could do a follow-up devotional about things that affected you you'd like us to keep praying for. I think that's a great I agree. They were all I just I was very fed by that and I would hope that that would happen. Good job, We can look at doing something like that. I think the devotion book came across came off really good. The the kids did a good job with that. We're gonna to have to do some tight deadlines on that because I don't know if you guys have ever tried to get 15 devotions from teenagers. It wasn't the easiest thing to do. Mine is not the last one. It's the devotion. It doesn't even need to be that long. It's just something that really touched them that they like us to pray for. Okay, I think I've got some ideas for, for ways we can do that. So that's good. We've got the questions, right? Questions? Have a question. Start with this. I mean, say one more thing. Okay. Well, what's the question? Later. Later. What do you need to say? I, I, seriously. I need to say that Stephen Price did an excellent job. I mean, excellent job. Good 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 job. Job. While we're in praise and I want to do something else too. Carrie. Okay. Carrie, back there, show. Carrie. Hey, Carrie was a celebrity because I didn't remember. Anna, Anna Johnson, I want you to come up a second. And while they're coming, now, this really brought the church together. Thank everybody for playing a big role in that. I asked Sandy church office this week, I said, they're going to do a luncheon Sunday. Could you take the little logo for the trip and make a place pad out of it? And she did that in no time at all. It's a beautiful little memento of, of the trip. So thanks to everyone for all it did. Okay, we've heard the word perspective a lot today, and it really is an important word every time you travel. I want to give a little bit of perspective about mission in this church. We've already heard about the Gordon family and the role they played in, in this whole effort and, and the whole mission down there in Brazil. Tentacles going out all around the world from the Gordon family. And it's amazing. In our church, about the time these folks were being born, or before, <laughs> Anna Johnson was our director of Christian education. At that time, we had one trip every summer and it was to the beach. It was a fun trip. Anna said, Anna said, we need to be doing a mission trip. And the kids said, what did they say, Danny? Oh, no. We don't want to go to the beach. We don't want to go to a mission trip. But uh, Anna stood firm and we started doing a mission trip and it became a highlight of the summer for the youth of our church. So thank you for the risk you took with that and, and the grief you took with that. <laughs> and uh, your children are, are big beneficiaries of that now. I didn't know that. I did. Might not have been a mission trip going on if Anna had started that. Gary, Gary started our, you know, did our first Brazil mission trip uh, four years ago. All right. And established the goal of doing that every four years so that every group of kids that come through will have the opportunity to do a major uh, trip to another country, preferably the Brazil mission that we're involved in. I know you're delighted to see this continue and, and thank you for the role you played in getting it started.
and yeah, Stephen's done a fabulous job picking the ball up and running with it and continuing this effort as well as all the rest of the youth program. So that's the perspective here at Central of how we continue to move along in mission. Thank you all very much for your role in that.